In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the dangers of Gnostic teaching. Sometimes people um, can be deceived and get into Gnostic teaching and not even realize um, that they've done so. And basically what Gnostic teaching is, is that it appeals to self and um, it teaches that one has a hidden knowledge or a secret type of knowledge that other people don't have and it's only revealed to a very select few. And these people are always encouraged to look within themselves for the answers and um, over and over again the deity of Jesus Christ and his gospel and uh, his death, burial, and resurrection, his blood atonement is attacked. And instead, uh, you have man being elevated to a status of, of godhood. And it goes clear back to the garden um, where the devil spoke to uh, Eve and said, Yea, hath God said... So, God's Word is questioned, it's ridiculed, it's held up to a scrutiny uh, that um, to the Gnostic would not pass the test. Words have been twisted to, uh, to fool and deceive people, making them think that it has some resemblance of authority when in fact it does not. And it comes in many forms. Um, the New Bible versions are that way. Over and over you see... Um, where the blood has been removed, the blood atonement has been removed from the new versions, where the deity of Jesus Christ, he's been demoted, uh, Satan has been elevated to a greater position, whereas Jesus Christ is um, not referred to as God. Uh, the redemption that we have through his blood has been removed. And you can... You can do a simple comparison yourself with the King James Bible, the ASV. And if you don't, if you don't accept the King James Bible as the authority, then what do you accept? You can accept pretty much anything else. Folks, I'm going to tell you this. God has one Bible. The devil has the rest. Uh, it's just that simple. Um, all these new versions that come out, they're continuously attacking the King James Bible, comparing themselves to the King James Bible as if they ever could. Um, but one of the things that I want to bring up today, I'm going to read an email that was uh, passed on to me from my uh, brother Stephen uh, Rebello from uh, South Africa. I'm not going to give the name of the person that wrote it to him, but... This is an example of bizarre Gnostic teaching. It just rambles on. It doesn't make sense. Um, this is what he wrote. Thank you for writing. Men live in the earth and the angels live in the heavens in the waters above the expanse, heaven. Peter, John, James, and the disciples of the kingdom bride stand on the sea of glass in heaven also, but not as completed living souls, like us, body of Christ, where the spirit, soul, and body are one, singularity, and the same. The difference is that the completed souls in Christ have citizenship in the highest heaven, 1 Kings 8, 26, 27, that is, heaven of Genesis 1, 1. The kingdom bride and the angels must wait until they participate in the marriage supper of the Lamb, Revelation 19, 5 through 10, before the man hath can be rejoined to the angel half and both go to heaven as a living soul. So now here already you have a combination of uh, people becoming angels, which uh, totally is refuted in scripture. There are some that teach that um, Jesus Christ was resurrected and had the body of an angel. That is a false heretical teaching. It is not in the Bible. It is Gnostic teaching, as well as um, the teaching that um, there's not going to be any females in heaven, that everyone is going to be males. Uh, that came from a very popular uh, King James Bible teacher that passed away some months ago. Um, it was one of the things that was propagated. 
But uh, I'm going to cover that in just a minute after I get through this terrible email. Okay. Before the man half can be rejoined to the angel half and both go to heaven as a living soul, angels and men and women are temporal hosts, all separated and taken from the original living soul that must be put back together again. Eve came from the side of Adam and the seed came from their union for incarnating onto the earth. However, note in Zechariah 4, 11 through 14 that there are the olive tree witnesses in the earth and there are candlestick witnesses also in the heavens because that is part of the process of incarnating on the earth. Notice this terminology, it's very new age. You have a heavens counterpart, true soulmate in the heavens, looking intently through two veils with great concern about his water witness half like a husband, David, looking over into the waters, earth, to see Bathsheba, which is a type of Adam and Eve and their incarnation onto the earth from heaven. Yes, the angels can worship God in heaven, but they stand on the invisible sea behind the Lamb. That is the counterpart of the sea of glass that then can be seen where the bride stands to follow the Lamb with us in him wherever he goes. These things become clear. Oh, that's nice. Boy, we'd like to have clarity here. <clears throat> These things become clear once you work through the many three witnesses mystery sets for each witness to testify about all the other parts of God's true Bible code. Wow. Now, supposedly this guy reads a King James Bible, but apparently he hasn't really read it, nor does he believe it. Um, that false teaching about everybody's going to be uh, males in heaven. Um, when people come up with these kinds of things, you need to do some research and say, where did they come up with that? Well, uh, that comes from the false gospel of Thomas, verse 114. And there's been some prominent people on YouTube that are supposed to believe the King James Bible, but when it comes to things like this, you can see that clearly they do not. Um, look down in, I've got this bookmarked here, the false gospel of Thomas, which is a Gnostic gospel. Um, once again, Gnosticism elevates oneself. It demotes Jesus Christ, which is what the new versions do. All of that ties in together. It's all the work of the devil to elevate himself, um, to get men to worship him, and to not worship God. And it demotes the deity of Jesus Christ. Verse 114, Simon Peter said to them, Make Mary leave us, for females don't deserve life. Jesus said, Look, I will guide her to make her male, so that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every female who makes herself male will enter the kingdom of heaven. So, when you come across teaching like that, run, 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 run. Just run away. Um, it doesn't matter what else they're selling. You just simply can't um, chew up the bones um, or chew up the meat and spit out the bones with stuff like that. There's just no meat there. Clearly, people who teach that sort of thing have um, uplifted themselves. They've elevated themselves to a, a status of, oh, look at me. I'm a great teacher. Look what I can do. And um, oftentimes, these people have books for sale. They have... Uh, tracks for sale, they're trying to sell you something, uh, they're trying to uh, get you to donate on their donate button through PayPal. Um, they have an agenda. Uh, they do not love the Word of God. They do not uh, treasure the Word of God down in their very soul. Uh, it's not about elevating Jesus Christ and worshiping Him and praising Him because He alone is worthy of all praise and honor and glory. No, it's all about self. And whether you're talking about people who trash the King James Bible and elevate the new versions, uh, or you talk about these Gnostic teachers that um, they, they appear to be good, because remember, 
We're talking about wolves in sheep's clothing. They look like sheep, but they're not. Inwardly, they're ravenous wolves, and they're sent in to destroy the flock to tear them apart. And I, for one, will stand up against this false teaching. Uh, the Bible is very clear that those um, whom God has, has shown the truth, we need to be sharing it with others, and we need to stand against these false teachings no matter where they come from. It's irrelevant. They may seem like pretty good people. Uh, they may seem really nice and have a friendly smile on their face and just uh, you just think they're just bubbly and full of love when inside they're ravenous wolves and they're trying to tear the, the flock apart. So that's going to do it for this video. I just wanted to um, cover some things about Gnosticism and um, how it takes away from the Word of God and demotes the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, our focus instead should be upon Him, upon glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ, and the King James Bible does that. It is the book that elevates Jesus Christ, that, uh, that glorifies Him. These precious words from Genesis to Revelation uh, shows us what a great and awesome God we serve and what He did for us on the cross, how He shed His blood and, and died and rose again on the third day. And uh, the new versions, they tamper with blood atonement. They do everything they can to destroy the truth. But the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Um, the truth always stands. The truth always wins because Jesus Christ is the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. Um, let me let me quote that exactly here. I, I do not want to misquote the Word of God. John 14. Verse 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And another thing that I wanted to point out that I had looked at here, um, Gnosticism is, is the opposite of what Jesus spoke about also in John, uh, the 18th chapter, verse 20. It says, Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple whether the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. So, it's not about some secret knowledge, some hidden knowledge. In fact, we're not to hide our light under a bushel. We're supposed to let it shine to the whole world. And um, beware, be cautious of anything that uh, does not glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, that does not give him the proper position that he so awesomely, richly deserves, because he alone is worthy of all praise and honor and glory. Look what we're going to be saying someday together. You see it over in uh, Revelation chapter 4. The 24 elders, representative of the saints. It says, The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So, let us not follow after anything that distracts us from the book, that distracts us from the truth, that uh, leads us in another direction, whether it's the silly, ridiculous Mandela effect. Uh, focus on Jesus Christ and on his book. And with that, we can walk in unity and in love, love one another, uh, because we have Jesus in common. And we all worship the same God, the one true God. 
And that is what the unity of the Spirit is really about. Um, so many times people allow other things to get in, into it and uh, they start looking into it and getting distracted by it. Um, our focus is Jesus Christ and Him alone. Uh, God bless you and have a good day.